confined area of the Northeast when we talk about Washington, Maryland, Camp David, Pennsylvania. Now, to sort of straighten this out as best we can, apparently United Airlines Flight 93, bound from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco with 38 passengers and seven crew, this plane was hijacked. And uh, while it was in the process of being hijacked, uh, the FBI, operating on evidence from the FAA, uh, believed that the plane had gone down somewhere near Camp David. Instead, it apparently went down in Somerset County in western Pennsylvania. That's about 80 miles from Pittsburgh. So here's the deal on the aircraft. About uh, 7.45 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11, Boston to Los Angeles takes off. Uh, United Flight 175, Boston to Los Angeles takes off at 7.58. United Flight 93, Newark to San Francisco, all these West Coast bound flights. Uh, in fact, all of these West Coast bound flights. That took off about 8.01 a.m. American Flight 77 took off about 8.10 a.m. Dulles to Los Angeles was its schedule. Now, apparently American Flight 11, uh, hit was the first to hit the World Trade Center. Then United Flight 175 was the second to hit the World Trade Center. And then that American Flight 77 from, uh, this is a scene of that plane, the United Flight 175 hitting the World Trade Tower, the second to hit it. Then American Flight 77, the one from Dulles to Los Angeles, uh, that plane hit near the Pentagon, and then the United Flight 93, Newark, New Jersey, San Francisco, uh, went down in Somerset County in western Pennsylvania. And as Bill Plant just said, that this clears up the business about Camp David. Scratch Camp David off the list, that while it was widely believed and it was reported that a plane had crashed near Camp David, apparently uh, that hijacked plane went down in western Pennsylvania. It's an understandable under the circumstances, it's sort of the geography got a little... All right, we're going to interrupt for a moment. I'm Jack Williams along with Kim Kerrigan because we're going to have an update in just a few moments as the acting Jason governor's Benjamin. in framing him. Yes, the governor uh, spoke earlier today. She has spent the day there in the bunker, and let's you, listen in um, to what everyone, she has to say. Uh, certainly, like most American mothers tonight, uh, at the end of uh, my day, I intend to head home and give my daughters a big hug. Certainly... As in events have unfolded today, we have learned that two of the planes uh, that originated from Logan International Airport uh, have been involved in a vicious terrorist attack. Uh, there will be many families across our Commonwealth this evening who will be suffering unbearable and terrible losses, and all of our thoughts and our prayers will be with them and their families in the days going forward. As the scope of the damage from these attacks becomes evident, uh, we also want to uh, make sure that we keep in mind those victims uh, who have felt the loss most acutely. Let me uh, thank the citizens of the Commonwealth uh, for the outpourings of support that they have offered today. Uh, many, many individuals have contacted my office, have contacted hospitals, and the American Red Cross tells me that at many blood donation sites in the Commonwealth, lines are out uh, the door and around the corner. I would like to remind the citizens of the Commonwealth uh, that after the first uh, 24 hours, uh, there will still be a strong need for blood donation in the coming weeks uh, and the days ahead. And so I have been asked by the Red Cross to convey uh, that it is uh, helpful if you would call ahead to the blood donation center where you're scheduled to go. And if you get a busy signal at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE, uh, please keep calling back and in fact uh, schedule visits to give and donate blood in the coming weeks as the uh, national blood supply will greatly need those donations. Also today, uh, we have everyday heroes among our public safety and emergency response agencies who have guaranteed the safety of the citizens and the families of the Commonwealth. Uh, I have directed uh, Colonel DeFava and the public safety agencies to maintain their vigilance, uh, to keep on a high state of alert, to make sure that families not only are protected, but they feel protected in homes across the Commonwealth this evening. Uh, I also am requesting that state employees return to work tomorrow. It is my hope uh, that the best response we can give in the face of this cowardly terrorism attack 
is to uh, whatever degree possible for each and every one of us to return to business as normal tomorrow. So state office buildings will be open. I should caution there will be increased security at those sites uh, because we continue to have as our first priority uh, maintaining the public safety of the citizens of the Commonwealth, uh, those who work in uh, our capital city, those who work in public buildings that sometimes uh, are the focus of these types of cowardly uh, attacks. So I just want to again reiterate uh, that the men and women uh, in our emergency response and public safety agencies who responded today, those who I was just able to thank personally who've worked out of uh, the headquarters here, but those at Logan Airport, those um, in uh, installations and sites across our Commonwealth who are guaranteeing uh, that we will not be bowed in our determination to carry on in the light of this cowardly terrorist attack are the people who have my greatest admiration. I'll take any questions you might have. To date, um, we have responded um, to a limited number of uh, requests for assistance. Uh, I know because I have gotten many of the calls that there are citizens across our great Commonwealth who want to respond and who want to uh, be available to help in the really chaotic uh, and tragic situation, particularly in New York City. Uh, we have had constant communication today with the New York State uh, Emergency Management officials, uh, with the counterparts of the state police and the fire officials. We are prepared uh, to uh, deploy resources to help them, uh, resources that won't in any way compromise the safety of Massachusetts families, but there is a very genuine desire to help and my request to all of those individuals and organizations who've made that request to me is to please um, wait until we are given direction from uh, New York and federal authorities. Uh, it is, as I'm sure all of you know better than most, a chaotic situation there right now. Uh, we want to respond when our assistance will be of the most use. And so that is what I've requested public safety officials and others uh, to do. Uh, we have done a good cataloging and inventory. The folks at the Department of Public Health are every two hours uh, surveying uh, the available beds in Massachusetts at our hospitals in case that's necessary. Um, doctors across the Commonwealth have uh, come up with a list of volunteers who are willing to either go to New York or stay here uh, and serve to um, the victims uh, of the violence in New York. The other thing that I should note uh, is in addition to the emergency response and the public safety officials, uh, Colonel DeFava has assigned um, 100 troopers who are detectives who are today working uh, with the FBI at Logan uh, in order to follow any early leads that are often the most important at determining who is responsible for these attacks so that those people can be brought uh, to justice. Governor, have you considered extending the calling hours in the 9th District at all to, to, to cope with some people who may have been confused this morning or scared to go out to the polls early in the day? I hope that there will be no further confusion. The polls are open in the 9th Congressional District. Uh, they are scheduled to be open uh, until 8 p.m. tonight, and I would urge uh, the residents uh, of the 9th Congressional District to go out and vote. We have an enhanced state police presence in order to reassure people, and we believe it is safe for people to vote and that they should go out and exercise that right this evening. Uh, Governor, did you think this incident warrants a top to bottom uh, evaluation of the security at Logan? Uh, I don't want to get in, uh, until we find out what's happened right now. Our, I think, focus has been and rightly should be in protecting the safety of the families of Massachusetts, in responding to the requests of the lead investigative agency, the FBI, to deploy significant uh, members of the state police detective uh, resources to Logan so that we can quickly follow up on any uh, leads, and lastly, um, to make sure that we're prepared um, to respond um, to any requests of, from, for assistance from New York. Uh, certainly, we will all be very interested uh, to find out exactly what happened that caused this tragedy. But my biggest concern now is to continue to protect the families of Massachusetts and to make sure 
um, that we have the right investigative resources being deployed to the assistance of the FBI so we can find the people uh, who perpetrated this awful act of cowardice and bring them to justice. As long as we feel it's necessary to protect the citizens of the Commonwealth. Well, Governor, you mentioned that you want people to carry on tomorrow with business as usual, both at the state level and certainly businesses, but uh, you certainly saw the pictures today of people streaming out of the Pru, the Hancock Tower, uh, frightened, concerned about what happened, and really at this point we have no guarantee that tomorrow whoever was responsible for the reign of terror uh, is it going to continue? So how can you just tell people? We have had, um, because of the strong response today of our public safety officials, um, we have uh, had in Massachusetts a, a safe day. Uh, we will continue to have our public safety officials at the same high level of alert. We will have an increased presence uh, at installations that we deem to be critical and potentially targets um, tomorrow. Um, but I think it's important. Uh, you know, the way that terrorists operate is that they seek uh, to, in the first instance, create havoc, and in the second instance, to create fear. And then the fear itself paralyzes our economic institutions, our governmental institutions, we cannot allow terrorists to victimize us twice by paralyzing us with fear. That is not to say that the fear isn't real and it isn't warranted. Uh, what I want people to understand is that our terrific public safety professionals will be on alert and will be there to protect their safety tomorrow. Um, my anticipation is that I'll be at the State House um, continuing to respond as necessary to situations as they unfold, but also uh, making a determination about the events on my schedule that need to go forward. Governor, isn't it, isn't it a bit cavalier of you to say people shouldn't be concerned, they should go about their lives? I didn't say people shouldn't be concerned. I said we're going to take... Their lives, they should go about the polls, but meanwhile, the state employees were sent home. You spent the day in an underground bunker. Isn't that... As I said already, the reason that I'm here today is for ease of communication. Um, we did take necessary precautions early this morning. Um, well, we tried to get a handle like people across the country on the situation uh, that existed and what the potential threats were. Uh, to date, it is now um, many hours later, we have still not had specific threats, uh, any specific threats against Massachusetts citizens or facilities. Uh, we haven't had any um, occurrences within our um, borders of additional um, attempts. I, I am not cavalier at all. I expect that citizens of Massachusetts and across our country who are watching the same scenes on the newspaper that I am are fearful. Uh, I accept that that is a natural and very understandable reaction to what happened today. What I'm asking is that uh, we try to start getting our lives back to normal so that we don't allow ourselves to be re-victimized uh, by the terrorists who seek to, in the first inst instance, uh, inflict harm on individuals, but then to paralyze our society through fear. Have you been briefed by federal authorities at all? I mean, the president is still apparently not willing to go back to Washington. Why? What's, I mean, do you know something that you're not telling us about whether there are more threats coming or anything? I'm not going to um, comment on that except to say there have been no specific threats. Uh, against Massachusetts uh, individuals or institutions, uh, and I have a great degree of confidence uh, that the response that we unleashed today to secure critical facilities to make sure uh, that the operations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts could move forward were successful, and we're doing everything in our power uh, to protect the families of the Commonwealth. Are those planes still in the air? Do you have other flights that uh, that are out there? And what can you tell us about what the F-15s are actually doing? Um, it, it, we will continue to respond to whatever federal requests there are. Um, my understanding is that the F-15s were requested just as um, a need to create a presence in the New York area as they assess the situation first thing this morning. Uh, it, they will uh, remain at the disposal uh, of a federal request for as long as they deem that necessary. We have had um, some additional uh, requests, but again, um, we mostly right now are assessing what resources we have in Massachusetts, massive resources that might be utilized and will be well utilized in the really chaotic situation as it exists in New York City. I don't want to add 
uh, to the nature of um, uncertainty and response that's down there. In fact, I want our um, medical personnel, our state police, our uh, firefighters who are particularly um, bothered by uh, reports of what 